Hello friends, this video on crop production and management part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now it is question time. So we will look at some of the questions and see if we have understood the lesson or not. So question number one, fill in the blanks. The same kind of plants grown and cultivated on a large scale at a place is called what? So when we grow the same type of plant, so instead of growing one tomato plant, if I grow thousands of tomato plants in a field, what is this called? It will be called a crop. The first step before growing crops is dash of the soil. The same thing, before giving your exams, you need to prepare for the exams. Similarly, before crop cultivation, cultivation the soil has to prepare itself. So the first step is preparation of the soil. Damaged seeds would dash on top of water. So how do we distinguish between the good quality seeds and the damaged seeds? Damaged seeds will be hollow from inside and therefore they will be light. And since they are light, so what will happen? They will float on the surface of water. So damaged seeds would float on top of water. For growing a crop sufficient sunlight and dash, and dash from the soil are essential. So what are the things that are the basic necessities for growth? One is sunlight, the other thing is water. If plants need water and that is why we have irrigation put into place. What other things do they get from the soil? Nutrients, yes. That is why we apply manures and fertilizers. So sunlight, water and nutrients are the three important things essential for the growth of a crop. Question number two, match items in column A with those in column B. So here you have the items in both the columns. So Kharif crops, so when do we grow the Kharif crops? So Kharif crops, so if you see here Kharif crops are those crops which are grown in the winter season. In fact, in the rainy season. So here, where do you see the examples of kharif crops? Yes, exactly. This is an example of kharif crop, the paddy and maize. So they are kharif crops. Rabi crops, which are the rabi crops? These are the rabi crops, wheat, gram and pea. Because they are grown in the winter season. Chemical fertilizers. So what do they do? Some of the examples are urea and phosphate. These are chemical fertilizers. They are rich in a nitrogen and phosphorus, but at the same time they are chemicals and they are prepared in industries. Organic manure. So manure is something which is prepared in the field and it is obtained from the plant and animal wastes. So it is obtained from animal excreta, cow dung, urine and plant wastes. So that's how we can match the two columns. Question number three. Give two examples of each, Kharif crop and Rabi crop. So Kharif crop is grown during the rainy season, so examples would include those which need more water, like maize, soya bean, sugar cane, these are examples of Kharif crops. On the other hand, Rabi crops are grown in winter season, which needs lesser water, at the same time a moderate climate. So examples are wheat, gram and pea. Question number four. Write a paragraph in your own words on each of the following. Preparation of soil, sowing and weeding. So we have discussed all these. So let us see how do we write quick notes. So preparation of soil. As I had mentioned before, everything needs preparation before the actual work is done. So in a similar way, soil also needs to be prepared. And who will prepare the soil? Of course, the farmers. So how do they prepare the soil? The following activities are carried out to prepare the soil before growing crops. What are they? Plowing. So in plowing, what do we do? The soil is loosened so that the soil becomes more airy. Once the soil becomes more airy, the roots will be penetrate. It will be able to penetrate deeper. So the growth will be better. Now when the root penetrates better, it will be able to absorb the better absorb nutrients and water better. 
Now again, when we loosen the soil, it, it, since the soil becomes more airy, it allows the growth of earthworms and microbes. And all these are farmers' friends. They in, help to increase the soil fertility. So that way, the soil fertility will also improve. Nutrient-rich soil is made available to the plants. That's because soil is also present in layers. So normally, the plants reach only till the upper layers of soil. Now, when you loosen the soil, sometimes the lower layers also come or towards the upper side. So that way, nutrient-rich soil will be made available to the plants. Next activity is watering. Where here we give water before plowing. This is done only when the soil is very dry because plowing on a very dry soil is a little difficult. So that is why watering is done. And finally, the third activity that is leveling, where once you loosen the soil, so the upper surface becomes uh, messy or half a set. It is not smooth. So to make the rough surface smooth, we flatten the soil after breaking the bigger pieces into smaller pieces. And this leveling is done with the help of a leveler. So as you can see here, it has a flat surface. Now as you move it, it keeps rolling. And that's how it, fl it flattens the soil. So these are the three activities which together prepares the soil for crop cultivation. Next is sowing. Sowing is done once the soil preparation is done. So here seeds are scattered on the soil which is already prepared. So here we need to ensure that only good quality seeds are used for sowing because if the seeds are not of good quality obviously the crop productivity will also not be good. Now, instead of sowing, doing it manually, which will consume a lot of time and labor, a machine is often used called seed drill. So this is how it looks like. So here you see, so these, these will have these kind of structures which will actually put or scatter the seeds. So some, there are some advantages of using seed drill, like it will do it very uniformly, it will do it faster, there is no human labor involved. And this entire setup is, uh, present towards the end of the tractor. So it is done with the help of a tractor. The third one is weeding. So weeding is removal of weeds. I have mentioned before also weeds are the unwanted plants which grow along with our desired crops in the field. And what do they do? They start competing with our desired plants. So here if you see these are the weeds. So, the, so the, this is our wheat crop in the field and these are the weeds. So they have just grown out of nothing and now they also need water, light, air, space to grow. And so they will snatch away the same thing from the wheat crops and that's how our wheat crops will suffer a loss. So the weeds will grow at the cost of the wheat crops. So they can be removed using weedy sites, which are chemicals that can kill weeds, but they will not damage the crops. However, they need to be applied properly. They should be diluted, that is mixed with water, and only then sprayed on the feed. And while spraying also, farmers should ensure that they cover their mouth and nose so that they do not inhale any part of the weedy sites as they are harmful chemicals. Question number five. Explain how fertilizers are different from manure. So here you can see a quick comparison between the two. So manures and fertilizers, both of them improves the soil uh, quality. So manure is a natural substance. So it is prepared from organic substance. It is prepared from the plant and animal wastes. Whereas fertilizers are in organic salts. For example, urea, phosphates. So they are fertilizers. Manure is less rich in plant nutrients, whereas fertilizer is very rich in plant nutrients. So that is the advantage of fertilizer over manure. It provides nutrients in very large amount. Where is manure prepared? It is prepared in the fields because it is prepared from plant and animal wastes. So you really don't need any factory or industry setup. Whereas fertilizers are prepared in camp factories because they, these are basically chemicals which are being prepared. Manures are eco-friendly because they are non-poisonous, they are not toxic and at the same time they are a recycled product that is they are prepared from plant and animal wastes so it is kind of recycling but fertilizers when they are used in excess or if a fertilizer application is followed by irrigation they can cause water pollution. In fact if it is given in excess amount it can even spoil the soil fertility. So that means fertilizer is not at all eco-friendly but manure is eco-friendly but the advantage 
of fertilizer is that it is very rich in plant nutrients, whereas manures are less rich in plant nutrients. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.